I talked about Jiro's relationship with Nahoko and so forth. But now I see the film in a different light. So I'd like to talk about that. I'll skip about an hour of the film. In Karuizawa, Jiro reunites with Nahoko. And at that moment, Nahoko is painting and her iso collapses due to the strong wind. The iso collapses and the parasol is blown away. For Nahoko, Jiro is her wind. As I told you in the previous lecture, the wind in this film corresponds to adversity or tragedy. But Miyazaki also shows new opportunities created when the adversities are overcome, like the Great Kanto Earthquake. Jiro is the wind for Nahoko. The strong wind knocks over the iso and blows away the parasol. As I told you in the last lecture, this iso collapsing is a sign that Nahoko is not going to live long. This encounter with Jiro will lead Nahoko to her death. The parasol blowing away is a sign of fate. But at this moment, Nahoko still doesn't realize that he is the same Jiro that she met before when he was a student. She realizes who he is when she sees him in a canteen later that night. When Nahoko realizes that it is the Jiro that she met before, her back straightens and her hair stands up. In the NHK documentary, Miyazaki mutters, those insensitive morons don't get it, and corrects the drawing of another animator. He says, in real life, when people are surprised, their back straighten and their hair stands up. You have to know these things. He says that as he draws the reunion scene, making the character behave the way he describes. And a mysterious foreigner called Castorp sits between Nahoko and Jiro. Miyazaki placed the third party, a stranger, between these two figures who are in a romantic relationship as a sign to represent their future. Jiro came here because he was ordered to take a break from work. He was very upset because his first airplane that he designed crashed. His project ended in failure. His project used a lot of money at a time when the country was desperately poor, just like Honjo said. But the project was a failure. Even Jiro is well aware that the government barely managed to scrape sufficient money together to fund the project. He can be a bit insensitive, but he's aware. He lost the drive to achieve his goal after this failure. He was devastated and didn't know why he was making airplanes in the first place. That's why he came to Karuizawa. In this scene, Miyazaki depicts Jiro's inner life. Jiro recalls his childhood memories while he's alone in his room. He's not motivated at all. This means that Honjo's character isn't needed anymore. In the early draft, Honjo and Jiro's friendship was at the center of the story. But the center gradually shifts to Jiro and Nahoko's romantic relationship. Their relationship is now at the center. It was a bold move. That's when this Castorp's role becomes bigger. Miyazaki didn't intend to make him a huge character, but it gradually became bigger and bigger. Castorp says to Jiro, Lovely place, isn't it? Perfect place to forget. When you stop the video, you can see that Castorp looks pretty intimidating. We all forget the war with China. We forget Manchuria, League of Nations, and that we are turning against the world. He smokes and says, Japan will explode, and so will Germany. 
And while Nahoko is speaking with Castorp, her tuberculosis returns. Castorp is another Caproni. He's telling Jiro to forget everything. Forget about the situation Japan is in. Forget about the League of Nations. Forget about the war with China. Just forget everything. He says, if you love this girl, you should be with her. He encourages Jiro to spend time with her and spend his life doing what you love. Afterwards, after the scene in Karuizawa, Jiro has allowed himself to completely forget all about how he blamed himself when his own project failed. He only thinks about Nahoko and planes. He eventually obeys Castorp's words. You should forget it. Focus on what's in front of you. Or you'll be wasting your time because you're not able to do what you really want to do. Jiro used to have a strong sense of justice, but he starts lying to the company, saying he has to go to a memorial service so that he can see Nahoko. When his superior tells him, too many memorial services, how many relatives do you have? He answers, I have loads. He's very unapologetic. He doesn't feel guilty about dodging work anymore. That's because he listened to Castorp's advice to forget everything. By this point in his life, the young Jiro, who had a strong sense of justice, has disappeared. So, you think that Castorp is like Mephistopheles, the devil, just like Caproni. But that is not the case. Castorp is more of a prophet. He's like Yoda in Star Wars. He only predicts what is going to happen to the couple and to this country. He doesn't curse anybody. He says Japan, which was still an empire then, is not going to live long. And so is Nahoko. You should act fast and just ignore what people say. Japan will explode, so hurry up and create your plane. Nahoko is going to die, so spend more time with her. He plays the piano and sings just once and for all, and congratulates the couple. He knows that Japan is going to turn against the world, that Japan and Germany will explode, and he's encouraging Jiro to forget all that. So, Castorp is not a devil. Although you'll see a witch in this film, you'll notice that in the next scene. It's Nahoko's curse. The day after Nahoko recognizes that Jiro is the guy she met before, she casts a spell. She places the parasol and the iso at the entrance to the forest. Jiro, not knowing what this is, goes into the forest and he sees Nahoko praying, gazing at the fountain. Water is gushing out. I thought if she knew that she was going to reunite with him, she should have just waited for him. Why did she cast a spell? When Jiro sees Nahoko praying, he says, Oh, excuse me, I didn't mean to bother you, and goes to leave, but then she says, Don't go, I was thanking the fountain. Jiro's surprised, and then... At the next moment, she approaches Jiro very slowly, saying, I was praying that you would come here. She moves slowly from left to right while saying this line. She is almost like somebody in a horror film. This has to be intentional. It's always intentional when a character speaks while slowly approaching somebody in any kind of animation. So Miyazaki intended to make this a scary scene. But because composer Joe Hisaishi's music is so beautiful, it's hard to get Miyazaki's message. But even after she says, I was hoping that you'd come here, you haven't changed, Jiro doesn't remember anything. He remembered Nahoko's assistant, Okinu, who was quite a beauty, but he hadn't taken any notice of Nahoko and didn't remember her at all. 
It all comes back to him when Nahoko tells him the whole story. Afterwards, the two start talking, but it starts to rain. While the rain falls, the two huddle under a single umbrella, and Nahoko keeps talking to Jiro. I found out where you live two days before Okinu's wedding. Okinu was so happy that she cried. I guess she did cry, but I don't think she cried because she was happy. It's a lie. If she was happy, she would have met him when she delivered his slide rule and shirt to Tokyo University two days before her wedding. But the reason why she didn't meet Jiro when she brought his slide rule and shirt is because she was going to get married two days later. She agreed to marry because she didn't think she would meet Jiro ever again. So of course she cried. Not because she was happy, but because she couldn't see Jiro. Naoko looks very happy when she talks about this. That's because Jiro didn't remember Nahoko, but remembered Okino instead. So it's a sort of revenge. Afterwards, Nahoko says, Ah, I got to tell Okinu. She had her second child the other day. The baby's so cute. You are looking at this woman and you're thinking, How scary a woman can be. It's a horror film, really. Nahoko is basically saying to Jiro, who remembered Okinu, that Okinu already has two kids, that she gave birth to her second child the other day. She sounds very innocent, but Miyazaki shows her dark side. But, but for us, middle-aged men, it's hard to know. You'll notice all these things that are pretty new to Miyazaki's film. When you look at it carefully, I personally feel that this is a magic rain to bring the two together. That's why the spell is broken when her father approaches her. After Nahoko finishes talking about Okinu and the rain is not necessary anymore, it stops. On one side of a line, the ground is soaked and on the other side, it is dry. But this can't be possible. Weather in Karuizawa can be unstable. So it is possible that one side of the road is wet, but it is impossible for the ground to be suddenly dry from a certain point after all that heavy rain. So this is one of the strange phenomena in the film. After the conversation, they turn around and Nahoko sees a rainbow. Nowadays, a rainbow is a sign of good luck. But long ago, people thought it was ominous. They used a rainbow shape to denote an evil omen. So you can see that Nahoko does indeed have a witch's magical power. It's quite scary. I try to be careful in this type of scene because I tend to overthink it. 